Hello my fellow riders, today we're going to be talking about five mistakes that are commonly made on motorbikes. This is generally for new riders. So today we are talking about five common mistakes made to motorcycles while doing motorbike maintenance or in some cases not doing it. So they are not doing your tire pressures correctly, not tensioning your chain correctly, not checking your oil correctly, pressure washing your bike and cleaning it or, or protecting it with ATF 50. Um, we will tell you the right and the wrong way of doing that. Now all of these things are easily remedied as long as you do them in the first place or uh, do them correctly in the first place. So we will be going through these five things just to make sure that you know exactly what you are supposed to be doing. So as you can see this bike is a bit of a dog and I have to do some work to it anyway. So if all beans is, is here we might as well do the work that is required. So the first thing is chain tension. So to do the chain tensioning on this bike you need an 18, a 21 and a 13mm spanner with some chain loop. So firstly undo the big bolt. Each uh, bike is slightly different and yours may have like a 17 and a 19 or a 17 and 18, 14 and 15, something like that. So undo the bolt, the retaining bolt. There's two of them on here. So there's two bolts. One um, is to lock the first one on and the other one is to actually tension the chain. Also as well on here you've got um, like little notches on your wheel so you can tell both sides whether it's equal or not. Um, if your bike doesn't have those it doesn't really matter. As long as your wheel is straight to start with then it shouldn't be a problem. If it isn't then maybe you need to get one of the uh, I think they're monkey wrenches laser level. So anyway this one's not actually that bad. It's a little bit loose and it is very, very corroded. So this isn't going to last much longer on this one. Also the brakes need looking at. So the best thing to do is half turn. Loosen that off a little bit more. So do half a turn this side. Half a turn this side. And that's all really this bike needs. I wouldn't really want to go any more than that. This, uh, this chain's, as I said, it's not great. And it may not last that much longer. But yeah, so after you've done that, you get the chain lube and put it on the wheel. You get the chain lube and you put it on the chain, not the wheel. Until you've coated it all, this one's gonna need quite a lot. But there's only so much you can do with something like this. Really, it needs replacing, but I will do that, but not on this video. So tighten up your retaining bolt on both sides. Tighten up the retaining nut on the spindle. On these they're supposed to be 87 newton meters of torque. And 
that's your first job done. Tension your chain. If you don't do this, potentially, uh, number one, if you do it wrong and over tighten it, potentially when you're going down the road, it'll snap. If you let it go rusty and don't put chain lube on it, also when you're going down the road, it can snap. And if you let the chain um, stretch too much, this one's all right. If it stretches too much, potentially it can come off of the sprocket, drop down it to the back, lock the back wheel, or it comes off of the front and smashes your case and then all your oil comes up. So all of that can be remedied by just checking your chain once every couple of weeks. And you don't even have to actually adjust it. You can just go and move it or kick it with your foot and you should be able to tell. Easy remedy to a solution that could potentially be deadly. So make sure you do that. Next one on the list is tire pressures. And one bonus thing on this, um, I'll show you, let me get it off. These light up um, caps for your, for your lights, they're, they're made out of aluminium. Um, and what tends to happen is because this uh, nozzle here is made out of steel. This is made out of aluminium. They expand and uh, decrease at the same uh, different temperatures. Um, you'll find that this will get locked onto there and you'll have to cut it off. So it's, it's uh, better off to leave the plastic ones on and then you don't have the issue. So tire pressures is another one that can cause a lot of damage um, to you and your bike, especially if they are really, really low. What can happen is if you're going around a corner and there are one or two PSI, your tire can actually come off of the bead of the wheel and then you won't be able to uh, control your bike and you're, you're coming off. So the best thing to do is check your tire pressures, especially in winter, um, they will lose pressure more because of the temperature differences. This one was about four psi under and that's all it takes just make sure that it's, it's pumped up to the correct uh, settings in your manual most of them are about 32 on this size bike and another thing as well is if you put too much pressure on it you're going to lose traction so um, potentially it can blow up but you should be it's going to take well over 60 psi normally to blow one of these up if you've got an inner tube it's less but um yeah if you overfill it then you're going to lose traction because the amount of rubber and the deformity on the tire um when you're going around corners and stuff like that the tire won't deform so you'll only have a small amount of rubber touching the floor at any time and obviously that's going to cause you massive issues so make sure you do the tire pressures when they're supposed to be done so being as we're this side of the bike, we're going to carry on with another one. So um, jet washing your bike. In theory, you can jet wash your bike as long as you're standing about a meter away and you always do your jet washing down. It's best off just getting a bucket and a sponge, go over everything. You can use a brush if you want to, like a dustpan and brush brush and go around and get all the detailing and stuff like that. Pressure washing, if you do it up, I guarantee you're gonna have wiring issues. Um, and if you go down, there is still a chance of having them wiring issues. But yeah, the, on the whole, try and avoid it. Also, uh, don't jet wash your chain because you're gonna wash all the um, grease out and then it, the inner, bar, inner parts of the chain will dry out and it'll start corroding and getting stuck in weird and wonderful positions and that's not going to do anybody any good. So uh, with jet washing, if you want to go to um, one of these car washes with the, the brushes and the jet wash and all that sort of stuff, by all means, use a brush. But if you are going to use a jet wash, stand about a meter away to a meter and a half, just so that you're not going to uh, push water into places it's not supposed to be. Number four, ACF-50. So ACF-50 was designed for helicopters to stop um, winter conditions and corrosion getting into the, like, the blades and stuff like that. Um, 
but they did release it for motorcycles as well so you can buy this it's something around 15 pounds and all you do is spray it on pretty much most things and then you're not going to have a problem with corrosion because it, it it creates a layer between your stuff and the bike so um the weather and the bike problem that we've been having with this is somebody will get a can of acf 50 and they will go absolutely everywhere do it on absolutely everything um, and they're going down the road and they wonder why their brakes do not work anymore. The problem with the ACF50 is it will uh, ingress into brake pads um, and you can't get it out. Once it's in those brake pads, you're not gonna be able to get it out again. So you have to replace the brake pads. Um, if you spray it on just your disc, it's still gonna get into the brake pads and you can clean it off the discs, but you're not gonna be able to clean it off the pads. And it just makes it so your brakes do not work pretty much at all say the average braking distance of 30 miles an hour is seven or eight meters or i don't know exactly what it is but as uh, say seven or eight meters your your braking distance with uh, acf on your pads is going to be three times that length so it's not going to be any good for you it's not going to be any good for the bike and it's not going to be any good for the person you just crashed into so last tip I just got to swap the, the bike around, but because of video editing, it is as simple as this. Final tip for today is checking your oil. Now, I did put up a short uh, the other day on how to check your oil, but we're just going to do it again for the purposes of this video. So, you unscrew the dipstick, and I don't know if you can see but on there you've got a full mark and an empty mark. I did have some people the other day telling me um, that I was doing it wrong compared to the what the book says. I've always done it this way, so that's the way I'm gonna do it. So you put the uh, dipstick in without pushing it in, uh, without screwing it in, and then you look for where the oil is. This one is exactly right. So it is at the end where it's supposed to be. Now, if I do go in and spin it and put it in and then pull it out, you will see it's just over the, the full mark at the top here. So that's how I've always done it. That's how I'm gonna keep on doing it, but yeah. So that is as simple as that. If it needs more oil, put some more oil in it. If it doesn't, don't. That is very important, that part. If it doesn't need more oil, don't put any more in it. You'd be quite surprised, but putting more oil in a motorbike can cause almost as much damage as putting too little. So if you put too little oil in a motorbike, you'll find that all the bearings will dry off, the piston rings will dry off as well, and all everything moving inside will start to degrade fairly quickly, get overheated, bits of metal will come off, your engine will die, everything will end, the world will end as well, just because you didn't put enough oil in. Um, but again, if you put too much oil in, round all of the shafts inside the engine, especially like the shaft that comes out for your drive shaft, your drive shaft, there's, there's rubber, uh, rubber rings around there. And if you put too much oil in, it blows them out so once it's blown them out, you're going to have oil leaks, you're going to have um, smoking and stuff like that. All your oil will end up on the floor and then it'll be the same as being not enough oil. So always go by what your uh, motorbike manual says. 90% of 125ccs have 1.25 uh, millimeter, milliliters of oil in it and most 50ccs have somewhere in the region of 800 to one liter. Now remember to get your bike serviced regularly because that one liter of oil will get gummed up rather quickly as well. And so for final thoughts, um, just a final tip. If you're maintaining your bike on your own and you've got a big job and you, you're not 100% sure on how to do it, if it's your only means of transport, I would suggest getting someone else to do it, i.e. a mechanic or um, or somebody who's been doing it for a long time. If it is a bike that you are just messing about with, a field bike or something like that, something that 
if it breaks isn't going to cause you a massive amount of issues, give it a go. Try yourself. You never know. You might be really good at it. You might change your career path, come into mechanics just because you tried it yourself. I doubt it, but you never know. Hopefully these tips have helped you out and hopefully they're going to help your bike as well because you'll know what to do, you'll know how to maintain your bike a little bit. This isn't everything you need to do to your bike, but it's a couple of tips on how to do the maintenance correctly. So thank you for watching my video. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below and I will do my very best to answer them. Remember, I have over 300 videos on many, many motorbike related topics, um, how to's, guides and reviews. So go and check them out. Hit the thumbs up if you like my video, comment below if you didn't and tell me how I can make my video better in the future. Hit that join button if you wanna help um, help write in reviews. Remember, this is my own channel. It does not belong to Cheap Bikes for Us, so uh, I am doing this off on my own back and I have to do it in my own time. So, yeah, I just do it to help you guys out. Subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell to stay updated to all of my latest content. But as always, ride safe.